All right, so what we have been seeing in our past uh, last couple of um, lectures is that um, if the Q value or if the resulting concentrations of um, soluble ions do not exceed the KSP value, then there actually will not be a precipitate in the reaction. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we can recognize what the equilibrium expression is. And in this case, put the values into it and see if that value exceeds the KSP, if the Q is greater than K. If the Q is greater, then what does that mean? Well, it means a precipitate will form. That's right. And if it's lower, then a precipitate will not form yet. Okay, until the concentration of the ions uh, exceeds that of the K, right? The solubility product exceeds the KSP. Okay, so what do you think? Well, in this one, you got 0.1 molar lead ion. That's nice. They gave it to us. And 0 0.05. So just 1 times 0 0.05. 0 0.005. So 0.1 times 0 0.005. Like that? Yeah. All right. So that equals 5 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, lead chloride, is that PBC? That's going to be PBCl2, huh? That's right. So we got to take that into account because PBCl2 will dissociate into lead ion and two chloride ions. Okay. Um, now, do we have to do anything with that too? Well, they told us that the chloride ion concentration was 0 0.005. So I don't have to, 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 to square that. I mean, I don't have to put double that value. The concentration is 0 0.005. But I do have to recognize that the mass action expression here is going to be lead ion concentration times chloride ion concentration squared. Okay, yeah. So 0 0.005 needs to be squared. 0 0.005 needs to be squared. The lead ion concentration is 0.1. Does that need to be anything? No, it doesn't raise anything. Because there's no coefficient here, right? All right, so 0 0.005 squared times 0.1, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6. So it's not quite 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, so no, no precipitate will form. Okay, very good. If we hadn't Squared that, though, we would have got a different answer, though, huh? Yeah, we would have. Okay, very good. So, um, you can do fractional precipitation, which is kind of cool. So, for example, if you have um, lead ion in solution and silver ion in solution, and I know, let's say, the KSP for silver iodide, and I know the KSP for uh, lead iodide, 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9, I can identify the concentration of iodide ion necessary, right? So silver ion, the silver ion concentration I'm told is 0.1. So the lead ion or the iodide ion concentration necessary to precipitate it is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 16. Anything below this concentration and the silver ion will not precipitate out because the KSP for silver iodide is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17. Same thing for the lead ion. If I have 0.1 molar lead ion and 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9, the iodide ion here is squared, it's concentration. So I could still just solve for x, which will be 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So this was x squared. This is 0.1. So 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 0.1, square root of it, and this would be this value here. So this is the concentration of iodide ion needed to precipitate out the lead. This is the concentration of iodide needed to precipitate out the silver. But there's quite a range there, right? If I'd go above this concentration, all of the silver ion will precipitate out. But if I stay below this concentration, none of the lead ion will precipitate out. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that. Okay, cool. So what we found here is how much you can add and precipitate out all the silver and leave behind all the lead. So we can also do this in terms of pH. 
if we have manganese ion and iron ion in solution, and we want to uh, precipitate out one, but not the other, we can look at the KSPs for iron hydroxide and manganese hydroxide and identify what hydroxide ion concentration is necessary to precipitate out uh, both of these. All right. So we got the KSP for us here, which is nice. We have the iron ion and the hydroxide ion to the cubed. So that, you, know, you have to make sure you recognize what the actual uh, equilibrium um, mass action expression is for the given precipitate that you're after. Um, but then you can also see 1.6 times 10 to the minus 39 and 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13, that one is more soluble than the other. Which one is more soluble? Iron hydroxide or manganese hydroxide? Um, which one is more soluble? Yeah. I don't know. How can you tell? Well, these numbers, right? Well, what about them? Well, the smaller one means that you only need a relatively low concentration of these reactants, right? Or these participants to make a precipitate, right? But here you need a higher concentration to make a precipitate. So does that mean the iron hydroxide is more or less soluble? That's right. This small number tells us that the iron hydroxide is less soluble. So can you solve for the necessary hydroxide ion concentration to precipitate out iron? And can you solve for the necessary hydroxide ion concentration to precipitate out uh, the manganese? I think I can. All right, I'm gonna push pause and you're going to go at it, all right? Or you're gonna push pause and you're gonna to try to solve those concentrations. All right, how did you do it, Fred? Well, you just put in uh, 0.1 for the iron concentration down there. All right, so 0.1 is the iron concentration. And then X cubed for the hydroxide ion concentration. All right. And then solve for X there. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 39. One point six times ten to the minus thirty nine times point one divided by point one divided by point one and then take the cube root raise it to the one over three yeah so that's the concentration of the hydroxide ion two point five times ten to the minus thirteen so x equals two point five times ten to the minus thirteen how does that relate to pH? So a negative log of that will give you the POH. Very good. Negative log will give me the uh, POH. All right. And then 14 minus that will give us the pH. Right. So pH 1.4. All right. Whereas our other one. What is the other one? The other one is um, 0 0.1 times x squared equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. So divide by 0 And then take the square root. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12, square root of that. 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6. Ne negative log of that. And that's the pOH, 14 minus that. And that's the pH, 8.102. All right, so at pH between 8.1 or uh, anything, let's see. I need 
to precipitate out the iron hydroxide. Um, but I need pH 8.1 to precipitate out the manganese hydroxide. That's what I'm thinking we're seeing, right? Okay, so if I choose a pH like four, what will that do? pH four, that would precipitate out the, because that's a higher concentration of hydroxide ion, that's more basic. So that would precipitate out the iron, but not the manganese. All right, let's see if we got it right. Okay, we did, that's right. So anything between pH 1.4 and 8.10 would precipitate out the iron, but leave behind the manganese. Very good. Excellent job. So there's a couple more problems for us to practice. Do you want to try this one? Sure. When a solution containing 0.1 molar calcium and 0.01 molar magnesium, what concentration of carbonate will precipitate one but not the other? All right, I'll, I'll try that. Okay. Why don't you push pause and try to figure it out? Okay, so I got it. You ready? Okay, folks at home ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. So 4.8 times 10 to the minus 9 is for calcium carbonate. So if you have 0.1 times the carbonate ion concentration, which we'll call X. Okay, the concentration of carbonate times X. That equals 4.8 times 10 to the minus 9. So the carbonate concentration for the calcium is just 4.8 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 0.1, which is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 10. All right, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 10. That's the concentration of what? Of the carbonate ion. CO3 2 minus. So anything above that will precipitate out our calcium, right? Yeah. And the other one is um, still just one to one ratio. So. What do you mean one to one ratio? Well, for magnesium carbonate. Yeah, what about it? Um, if you draw the mass action expression, it's just one magnesium ion for one carbonate ion. Okay. So the coefficients in front are one, and that's important because if you had some coefficients in front of the other than one, you'd need to raise those values to that, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, what do we do then? 4.0 times 10 to the minus 5 equals concentration of magnesium, 0 0.001, 0 0.01 times the concentration of carbonate. So four times 10 to the minus five, divided by 0 0.01, four times 10 to the minus seven. Are you sure? Whoops, minus five, divided by 0 0.01. All right, so I think that when you divide by 0 0.1 here, Fred, 0 0.01, it actually is 4.0 times 10 to the minus um, 3, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, divided by. All right, so 4.0 times 10 to the minus 3 here, and that makes this 4.0 times 10 to the minus 8, right? Yeah, okay. So... That's the concentration of carbonate ion necessary to precipitate out the calcium. This is the concentration of carbonate ion necessary to precipitate out the um, magnesium. So which one of these is in between? Um, let's see. Which one will precipitate one but not the other? Um, hmm. 5 times 10 to the minus 8 is more. 5 times 10 to the minus 7. Oh, okay. So 5 times 10 to the minus 6 is less than 5 times 10 to the minus 3, but more than 5 times 10 to the minus 8, right? Okay. So 5 times 10 to the minus 6 is more than this, but less than this? Yeah, but 5 times 10 to the minus 7 also. And 5 times 10 to the minus 8 is more than the bottom one. Oh, so maybe it's all of these? Yeah, I think that's right. I think all of these will do it. Good job, Fred.